Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And maybe you're heading back into the office soon, or perhaps you never even left in the first place. But in any case, now is the perfect time to look at a new office knife. And we've got some great options to look at today. Let's check them out. All right, so when we're talking about office knives, there's a lot of great knives out there that would be very good to have in an office setting. And in fact, a lot of gentlemen's knives are pretty much perfect. But I want to show you something a little bit different today because we've already done a gentleman's knife video. We'll make sure to leave a link to that. Any of those are going to make good options as well. But one of the things I tend to think of as making a good office knife is kind of the gray man philosophy, that ethos of being kind of invisible in polite society, but still very well equipped. So we want something that's going to be innocuous looking, but still very effective, not too big, not too tactical, just some good pocket knives. And given that gray man philosophy, I almost wanted to put nothing but gray knives on this list. So there are a bunch of them, but there'll be a couple other options too. Um, but let's start out with a classic, the Kershaw Leak. The Leak is just a bona fide EDC staple. It's nice and slim, so it carries very discreetly. You've got a very acute modified Warncliffe blade here. Might be a little too tactical leaning for some, uh, but I'll leave that up to your discretion, of course. One of the things that is going to make a, a good office knife in my mind is the same thing that makes uh, an executive knife what it is, in that they're going to make really good letter openers. And you've certainly got that with this particular blade. These are also pretty affordable to start with. They started about 45 bucks for the standard stainless steel frame locks with the Sandvik Swedish steel. This particular one's upgraded a little bit. Uh, we've got the uh, composite technology blade that Kershaw likes to use. We're at the spine or at the uh, blade edge of the knife. We've got CPM D2. So edge retention even better uh, and toughness, I should say, even better than standard D2. And you get that nice uh, aesthetic look to the, uh, the joinery, to the two sections of blade as well. I think the uh, this kind of gray on gray aesthetic certainly works for the uh, the unobtrusiveness of an office setting. But you can of course get fancier with these if you like. There are more gentlemanly versions. We've got carbon fiber, some more colorful versions as well with some anodized aluminum handles. Those come with a liner lock rather than the uh, the frame lock as well. But nice set of options for the leak. And it's easy to see why there's so many variants out there because it's been such a successful design over the years. It just plain works really well, carries nice and easy, doesn't look too threatening, made in the USA to boot, and especially at that $45 level, it's a really good affordable way to get a USA made knife. So sticking on the uh, affordable end of the spectrum here for a few knives, got a few other options as well. Uh, the first kind of similar vibes to the leak, only you have a, uh, a drop point blade here, is the Steel Will Intrigue, which comes in about 46, uh, just a bit over $46 right now. For that, you're getting this nice, narrow D2 steel blade, about three and a quarter inches. Again, nice, narrow, tapered shape. Works great as a letter opener or as any kind of uh, just daily utility needs. Maybe a little bit of food prep if you're not too afraid to, uh, you know, whip this out in the break room where you work. Certainly not a problem here at the Knife Center, but not everyone can work at the Knife Center, sorry to say. Color on this one, we're going with the gray FRN. It's got some blue barrel spacers on the back, nice pop of color, but you can get black as well. And if you prefer some more premium materials, uh, I've got a version over here that runs on ball bearings. You've got G10 and M390 steel. Carbon fiber is also available, uh, but the standard model here, base model, actually has uh, no ball bearings in the pivot. We are bronze washers, but the action that Steel Wheel gets out of their bronze washer based flippers is really good, like right up there with anyone at any price, honestly, that does that type of uh, that type of pivot construction. That's just done exceptionally well. And again, you've got this nice, narrow, easy to carry profile in your pocket in day to day use as well. Keeping with the long and narrow, we got to talk about the CEO flipper from CRKT. Uh, flipper version, of course, is new for this year, but there's a thumb stud version as well. But in my mind, the flipper version here is the way to go, not just because of the flipping action, which is nice, but you've got a tip up deep carry pocket clip as well, which is just a little bit nicer in my mind, at least in my hands as well, than the, uh, the old tip down version on the thumb stud model. Price on this is 40 bucks. You've got an Aus 8 blade here, about three, uh, three and three eighths thereabouts. Nice, narrow, kind of Quaken-inspired shape. 
precisely ground flat grind and that swedge there really good profile for moving around corners doing that letter opening opening your boxes maybe if you're uh, heading out for a, a nice steak lunch on the uh, on the company card it'd be a good uh, good gentleman's steak knife as well handle black grn you got a little bit of texture there nice and classy looking without being too shouty got your liner lock for security just like that steel will just had as well and the flipping action just a, a word of note for some folks who uh, might not be used to this style of flipper it's a little bit more of a push but once you get the hang of it it was very intuitive for me at least first first go it's got some nice snappy action there ikbs ball bearings in the pivot and very nice design so we've had some gray, we've had that black handle, uh, but another nice unobtrusive color is Jade G10, which you see on a few models. And right here, the CJRB Rhea, I think makes a great office knife, especially here on the budget end of the spectrum. I mean, this is a $32 knife. You've got a sub three inch blade, Sandvik 12C27 stainless for the blade steel, really nice stuff. And of course that nice Jade G10. It's a little translucent, you can kind of see through it a little bit and some nice contour to the handle as well. So it doesn't feel blocky or chunky in the hand and a nice deep carry pocket clip as well, which the CEO had one as well. Could be a very important thing for your office setting. You might not want it to be a, a knife that shouts too much, even in your pocket. Again, everyone's uh, workplace is gonna be a little bit different, but it's a nice touch right there. Now, if you're looking for more performance, but you like this design, check out the versions with RPM nine steel, which is a powder metallurgy steel, better edge retention, still nice and stainless and tough as well. And some more handle options, including some knife center exclusives like marbled carbon fiber or pack of wood, good gentleman's knife, knife options, those as well. But any of them are gonna have the same nice action. It's one of the things I really like about this design. It is right-handed only. Uh, you can see the, uh, the, the thumb stud is kind of buried into the handle a little bit because the relationship of the position of that stud to the pivot, they had to get exactly right so you can do this. Just pops open every single time and feels great. So these knives all have a great slim characteristic to them, but if you want something that maybe feels a little more substantial in the hand. Another budget option to take a look at is the Civivi Elementum shown here in office gray, uh, coming in about 50 bucks. For that, you've got D2, just under three inches, nice, acute hollow grind with a very thinly ground edge. Civivi always does a really nice job with those. Liner lock and deep carry pocket clip again, which folks will definitely appreciate in the office. Also ball bearings in the pivot here as well. So you get that nice crisp action going on. And the nice thing about this, uh, this Elementum is it's kind of the essence of pocket knife boiled down. It doesn't have a fancy shape, nothing too kind of shouty or extreme, maybe a little generic, but I say that in a good way because the elliptical shape of the handle here or the, uh, the rounded shape, I should say to the profile, works with just about any hand size out there. There's no sharp spots to restrict your grip and be able to put that nice D2 blade to work. In a similar vein, we can look to Wee Knife Company, which is Civivi's parent company, to their banter model, also available in gray G10 amongst others. Similar amount of blade edge, but you've got S35 VN in this case, and the pricing comes in under 110 bucks. So nice performing steel, definitely a step up from the D2. Compared to that Elementum, the handle itself is actually about the same length and it may appear a little bit blockier, but it's still kind of engineered or shaped in such a way that your pinky finger can fall off the back without compromising your grip, without feeling cramped. And because of the width this way, it has a tendency to feel a little bit larger in your hand. So if you're looking for that office knife without giving up or with getting as much kind of capability as you can get in these uh, smaller innocuous sizes, this is definitely a really good option. Thumb studs only here, nice flat grind on the S35 VN rather than a, the hollow grind of that Civivi, but ball bearings in the pivot again, deep carry pocket clip, nice and classy and nice snappy action as well. All right, now I've got a bonus pick for you, and that is the Spyderco Para 3 in Maximet steel, which is paired with that gray G10 in this case. And I say bonus pick because, I mean, this, even though this is a great knife, 
might be a little bit more aggressive than most people would want from a quote unquote office knife. But if this is something that uh, wouldn't raise too many eyebrows where you work, fantastic option. Blade is under that three inch mark, full flat grind, and with that Maximet, you've got an insane amount of edge retention. But in a similar, uh, the reason I'm putting it here is I just talked about that we is kind of having a bit more girth to it, a bit more grip, so you can feel like you're not giving up too much to hit the, uh, the smaller office knife size. Even more so here, you have got a lot of handle to grab onto. You can get a full working grip on this knife. It's not puny, you're not slipping off of it. And then of course you've got that great compression lock on the back as well. So you can flick the blade open and close with your wrist, keeping the edge away from your fingers while you do it, or you can open it a little more, uh, more subtly if you want. Four position pocket clip as well. It's just a fantastic workhorse if you can carry something like this where you work. If that's a little bit too much, check out this other Spyderco, the Chaparral. Very, uh, very different overall to that Para 3, even though you've got a similar amount of blade length there. We're about 2.8 inches, but the whole knife is altogether slimmer and more pocket friendly overall. That blade itself is XHP steel from Carpenter. Nice, thin blade stock with a full flat grind. This is going to be a very, very efficient slicer overall. We've also got gray handles, FRN in this case, but there are more uh, kind of fancier versions if you want a more gentleman's knife vibe rather than the, uh, the gray man vibe of this particular version. Mid-mounted lockback, as well as a reversible folded over wire pocket clip means lefties and righties can use it. And even though you do have a little bit of handle sticking up, especially in an office setting, that wire pocket clip has a very classy presentation. And even though this whole knife is altogether much narrower, you can still get all four of your fingers on there, at least if you don't have like really big mitts out there because of that nice finger choil around the pivot of this knife. So you can really put that shorter blade you're working with to a good amount of work and control. And last but not least, I didn't mention the price comes in at about 96. All right, next up, I've got a couple of office gray bench maids as well. We've got the Mini Griptilian and the Valet, both of them coming in exact same price, just under 175 right now, and spec'd very similarly. Basically, you just need to decide whether you like the slightly more uh, executive styling of the Valet or the slightly more scaled down tactical styling of the Griptilian, but either one is going to be very nice. Blades on both, just under three inches. We've got M390 for the Valet and 20CV on the Griptilian, which is just the same stuff made by two different companies, essentially. M390 being a, uh, I believe, Austrian make, but comes from Europe and 20CV made right here in the USA. If that's important to you, that would be the option to go with. Both of the handles are nice and neutral. Griptilian, of course, is famous for its handle ergonomics. You got a little bit of swell going on and a bit of a pop of color with blue there on the backspacer and some G10 liners as well. Whereas the Valet is even more unobtrusive. You've got just steel liners here, standard gray. Both of them have deep carry pocket clips, by the way, black on the Griptilian, polished on the Valet. And one thing you'll notice about this one, this one's actually my uh, first production version of this knife from many years ago. Uh, I actually bought this from Knife Center way back before I ever worked here. So that's kind of cool to, uh, to bring it back for a video now. But of course, the heart of both of these knives is that axis lock. You've got the full size uh, or a standard size lock bar on the Griptilian and a miniature sized lock bar on the Valet. But good things about these are the same as the good things about that compression lock. Nice and strong. You can keep your fingers out of the, uh, the path of the edge. You can wrist flick it open and closed and even better, fully ambidextrous operation for all of these, both of these knives, both on the lock and the pocket clip as well. All right, so, so far we've covered kind of the budget side of the office knives, the higher performing steels, but what if you want something that it's not necessarily a gentleman's knife, but you want something that is a bit more premium feeling. And the first one I want to look at is the We Knife Company Moat, which is a nice small guy, comes in about 170 right now. And for this, you're getting a full fledged titanium frame lock flipper. The blade itself is S35VN, about 2.6 inches, and it's got a really cool kind of elliptical all-bellied shape here. It's the kind of blade shape that, that really works nicely 
both in my head and in actual use. And just like their, uh, their more, uh, their less spendy cousins that they make with Civivi, nice, thin, very sharp edge as well. Got that nice stone wash finish and a high flat grind, swedge along the spine. This is just a small knife, but a very small and slicey knife. Handles, like I mentioned, are titanium. You've got the, uh, the standard lock bar there with your steel insert. Nice gold anodized backspacer, which is kind of a semi floating design, which is really cool. Single position pocket clip, nice milled titanium, definitely a nice, uh, a more premium feel. And then ball bearings in the pivot with a nice crisp flipper. And man, I, I really do dig this knife. It's a good O stop hell design. It's not too ostentatious, but it still does manage to feel quite special. Another more premium feeling option, let's say you want to go with something that is a non locking knife, check out the real steel Luna. This comes in about 95 bucks and it is a titanium handled slip joint. Pricing on these is not too unreasonable comes in about 95 bucks right now. The titanium itself is finished quite nicely. And the blade comes in under three inches and you've got N690, nice and thin, full flat grind, excellent, excellent slicing characteristics overall. This is a non locking blade, like I mentioned, comes with a nice uh, kind of two thirds, one third stop here as opposed to a traditional half stop. And it closes up quite nicely. Deep carry pocket clip as well and nice and slender. Honestly, that's going to look only uh, just like an ink pen in your pocket does definitely not scream a pocket knife. But it's very easy to take out very easy to deploy thanks to the twin fullers along the edge of the spine. And even a nice little bit of a uh, safety measure, even though this is non locking, you do have some jimping here right on the Ricasso of the blade. And the place where your index finger is going to sit is going to keep the blade from closing too far and potentially cutting yourself. You don't, definitely don't want that. And the other nice thing it also does is it lets you feel when you're getting close to the edge if you're not looking too closely at the knife. Just overall, a very thoughtfully designed slip joint executed very well. Now, if you'd rather spend a little bit less money, you could check out the Luna Light. Same design, just different materials, and the price comes in, I think they start at just about 30 bucks these days, which is quite nice. For that, D2 instead of N690 and G10 instead of titanium. And you can see the nice subtle blue color here is a pretty nice option for an office knife. They didn't have a, uh, they didn't have an absolute gray version for this video. That'd be the, the titanium right there. Um, but yeah, same great stuff. Nice snappy action. In fact, it feels maybe even a little bit better, at least between these two examples, same great deep carry, subtle pocket clip, solid design, very, very affordable. All right, next, of course, a Swiss Army knife from Victorinox. Swiss Army knife is almost always going to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good office knife choice, at least until you're, uh, if you're not carrying one of like the big, big outdoorsy models. Really good options. No one thinks twice about a Swiss Army knife. And I love the cadet. I always like to mention that, but I did feature that in our aforementioned uh, gentleman's knife video, and I didn't want to duplicate onto this vid, but know that that cadet is also a great option, as is the Alox Bantam. A couple different options right now you can get black or red on this model for the uh, the Alox aluminum, both of those are knife center exclusives. And they come in 27 bucks, very reasonable. For that very slim and unobtrusive knife, only a single layer thick on the uh, slip joint mechanism on the back. So it doesn't take up a ton of pocket space. And you get a pretty nice bare essentials set of tools. You got a simple flat ground blade, very simple stainless here, and a combo tool on the other side, which will open cans as well as bottles. You can do the, uh, the wire stripper act with a little notch there, and even do a little bit of flat head screw driving as well. Comes with a nice half stop on that tool, snaps shut really nicely. Can't go wrong with one of these in red or black. Last but not least, we got to go with another classic slip joint brand, that being Case. And I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of different handle options out there, but I think their yellow synthetic makes a good everyday, unobtrusive, not too fancy uh, handle option. And I think it looks really good on this sow belly right here. Single blade model comes in about 50 bucks. Obviously these are American made. And in addition to having a, a good feel in the hand, it's kind of a three and a half finger grip, but it feels cocked at just the right angle. Thanks to that handle shape. 
You've also got one of the few case knives nowadays that are still made with a carbon steel blade rather than their, uh, their 420 style True Sharp stainless. Really nicely rendered here. It's got a nice, it's kind of a cross between a high polish and a stone washed finish here. I'm seeing reflections, but there's definitely a stone washed texture to it, which I really like. But if you're into kind of that old school pocket knife vibe and want to want that to be your office knife, Case really is a great place to look. I mean, Boker makes some uh, some good options. There's some other nice brands out there too, but it's really hard to beat the value offered by a case knife today. All right, that's it for my list of the best office knives you can get right now. Let me know what you guys are carrying uh, in your office jobs though. Plenty of different uh, environments out there and plenty of different knife styles that are gonna work quite well. But I think these are all a very good place to start. If you want to get your hands on any of these, we'll leave links in the description. Those will take you over to knifecenter.com as always, and make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program so that at least you'll earn some free money on your next knife when you spend your money on one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.